guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm Chad from 218 Cultivation, and today we're here to just do a basic video uh, about the AC Infinity Controller 69 Pro. Now, if you've just gotten a grow tent and you're looking for some basic settings on how to configure your controller, or if you just bought the controller in general and already had a tent, um, we're just gonna review, you know, setting up each one of your devices and going through just basically the configurations and some setups and everything like that. Uh, you know, there are some more advanced settings, but today we're just covering just in general how to get you up and going and get you growing. So with that, let's get into it. All right, now that we're in the app, let's go to Smart Controllers. And then once we're there, we're gonna wanna select the Controller 69 Pro. Now we gotta hit the front port button for five seconds, and this will pair us to the controller via Bluetooth. So that Bluetooth button will start flashing for five seconds, and then it'll start to search for the device here. And here it's searching, and sometimes you get this fail button like you see here. Um, just hit the try again button, and it'll just scan again for your phone and eventually it should just connect. All right, here we go. Now let's connect to Wi-Fi now. Enter your Wi-Fi network settings and then hit next. And then it's just gonna connect the device to your Wi-Fi. Here we go, this will just take a few seconds as well. And there we go. So let's just hit done and then we'll go right into the device now and start doing the uh, configurations. All right, one of the first things I like to do in the app is we're going to click the top right gear there. At the, and you're going to want to just be in the controller tab and we're going to name the tent. Let's go ahead and name the tent to whatever you want to pick your name to be for your tent. And then we're, for this part, we're just gonna skip this for now because these are kind of advanced settings. Um, next, click the port. And this is where you're gonna wanna know which device is plugged into which port. Yours probably just says port one, port two, port three, or port four even. So click on the port one and then go ahead and just name this port to, you know, whatever you wanna call it. You know, I've, you know, I just call mine grow light. Um, they all, you also can, uh, if it's not a grow light, you know, you can hit the edit button on the device type and hit fan or humidifier. Uh, and that's about it for that part for now. So let's go back and let's get into some more advanced settings for each one of our individual uh, devices. Okay, so let's start off now by configuring our grow light. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that your off is set to zero. Uh, the reason why you wanna do that because if you have this configured to anything but zero, when your lights go out, they will still be on. You know, for example, if I have this set to three on accident, you know, you have to accidentally hit the slider when the lights go out, they'll come back, they'll stay on at level, whatever level you have chosen. Okay, so lights, here we go. Um, you'll want to set on, go to the on tab, and configure your level that you want your light at. Now this is going to depend on what stage you are, you know, so this could be as, you know, as low as 1, or it could be as high as 10, you know. Um, that all depend on how far your lights are away, what's, you know, what, if you're in veg or if you're in flower, you know, that, that depends on you. So once you have that configured, let's just keep this to level four for this, for now. Level four, all right. Auto, uh, we won't be using auto for our lights because that auto is for temperature triggers. We don't have to worry about that for lights. We don't have to worry about light for VPD. Uh, cycle 
you could do this, but I don't think you will. It, it would turn your lights on for a certain period of time and then shut them off again. Um, we're going to do mainly just you're going to use schedule. So here's where you're going to set your light, light schedule for your grow. Um, you're going to want to do you know whatever you choose to do. You know, the 18.6 is a popular light schedule. 19.5, you know, or 24. Or, you know, if you wanted to keep your lights on 24 hours, you would just hit the on button and just leave it. Um, but for this, you know, I have mine configured to, I don't know what that is, 20. But that's just for example here. So, you know, that's all you got to do for your lights. Leave it as that and then your lights will come on, you know, for this video, 4 p.m. And then they'll shut off at 11 a.m. And that's all you have to do for your lights. They'll be at um, the max intensity of 4 and then when they shut off, they'll be at 0. So that's all it is for uh, light, for your grow light. All right, now we're going to move on to the exhaust fan. We'll start out by configuring our off mode, which we're going to set to zero. We'll switch to the on tab. And right now we're going to set it to six because we want, if it gets too hot in the tent, uh, we want it to, you know, exhaust that humidity or the temperature, you know, and we're going to need a fairly high speed to do that very quickly. So six or seven is probably a good number to do it. Depends. Um, let's see. So we'll just go with six. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. So here's the main temp. Here, here is the main option I use in my tent is the auto function. So this has different temperature triggers. So as you can see here, I have a temperature trigger set to 80 degrees. So as soon as my tent tent gets to 80 degrees, my exhaust fan will kick on. At level six and it won't go off again until my temperature goes back below 80 degrees um, if you scroll down a little bit you also have a humidity trigger now this one will do the exact same thing you know if it's the temperature in your tent gets to 60 degrees or 60 percent humidity your exhaust fan will kick on and then it won't go back off again until it's below the 60 60% 60 humidity percentage. So, you know, these can be used if you're trying to maintain, you know, a certain temperature, certain humidity, you know, that's the main reason for the, the, the auto function. Then you just kind of don't have to worry about trying to keep, you know, certain temperature or certain humidity percentage in there. You know, it'll stay at those thresholds always if you have this, you know. Uh, let's see, you know, there are VPD options. VPD is actually very similar to the auto function. Um, you'd have to do some research on VPD, which is vapor pressure deficit. Uh, VPD, you, you, you maintain certain levels during different stages of the, of the plant's uh, cycle. You know, you know, let's say, for example, uh, you know, VPD of 1.0 would be a vegetative VPD. You know, it's usually 0.8 to uh, point uh, one, I think, just for the sake of the video, but we won't go too much into that. Um, cycle, you could you can use this one if you're always trying to recirculate fresh air in there. You know, you could turn the turn the device on, you know, for two hours, and then turn it off. For two hours if you chose this option so that way it would run for two hours continuously at maximum level of six and then it would shut off again at the minimum level of zero for two hours and that would continuously do that the entire time so i usually just choose um, the auto function for your exhaust fan so that's all you need to do for that okay so we're moving on to the fan now and it's going to be pretty similar to the way we set up our exhaust fan with the exception of the off mode. So in the off mode, we're just going to actually set our off mode to a one or maybe even two. So what will this, this will do, it just keeps the continuous airflow going inside your tent. 
So you don't have any dull, you know, just stagnant air, just, you know, just sitting there. This will always just keep a minor airflow. So then the thing we're going to do, we're going to set, oops, we're going to set the on portion of it then now. So we're going to set the on to just six for this example. And then we're going to set our auto. And then this is where we're going to set our temperature triggers the same as our exhaust fan. So we're going to verify our exhaust fan setting. We have the high temperature at 80 and the humidity at 60. So we're going to just set our humidity at 60 and our temp is at 80. So this, these are the same exact settings as our exhaust fan and our circulating fans will kick in, blow that air around so that the exhaust fan can and pull all that, you know, hot, hot air and humidity out of your tent. So when this shuts off, then it'll go into your off mode, which will keep it at a two. We'll just keep a just nice slight breeze in your tent, which is what you want. And you may even want to set this a little bit higher, depending on, you know, your, your choice. So a uh, minimum, I would keep it at least a one for your off mode for your circulating fan, but you, know, you could set it a little bit higher if you want to. All right, so that's all that's to do for the fan. Um, you know, I don't really set the cycle, but you know, obviously that's an option as well, or timer and timer to off. But you could use VPD, but you know that it's easier to set it to just auto and keep it, you know, the humidity and stuff like the levels that you want. So I like to keep it just at auto. All right, that's uh, that's it for fans now. Huh? Okay, so we're going to program our final port out of our uh, 69 Pro controller. And for this uh, for this port, I actually have a UIS control plug. Uh, I use this to control my dehum dehumidifier. And uh, you can also use it to control, like, say, heater or humidifier, or air conditioner. I guess whatever you, whatever you have that does not rely on a power button to switch the power on and off. So if you turn it on and it, you know, it just stays on, you can use one of these plugs. So we're going to go into the port, port 4, and we're just going to name this DHU humidifier confirm now we need to go back and see here's where it gives you your options so or we're just gonna you know give it the little dehumidifier icon and then we're gonna go oops we want to save okay So off, we're going to leave it off, and on is going to be on because this can only turn on and off uh, the device itself. It can't control any internal settings of the device. So it's kind of just like a smart plug in a way. So what we really need to do is configure the auto. And what we're going to do is set the auto trigger for humidity on this. And since it's a dehumidifier we want to turn the humidifier on so if it gets to um let's go to 65 percent humidity in there it'll turn on the dehumidifier and then you know once again it'll shut off once it gets below that number <clears throat> so you don't want to set both the high and low you just only one of these at a time will kick on your, you know, your UIS compatible device. Um, you could set a, you could set a high temperature alert, you know, as well, but you're going to have that. It only kick in one trigger at a time. So you're better off just picking one and going with it. Um, so that kind of wraps up thing. The, the settings for all four ports there that you might want to choose the program. Um, the only thing else that I can think of real quickly, I wanted to touch on the grow light and then we're going to go into settings. 
And from the controller port, port uh, we were looking for this port. Here we go. Okay. Sunset sunrise duration. Now, what this setting will actually do is if we set this to two hours, this is the amount of time it'll take for your grow light to fully brighten to its peak level that you have set. So if you have it set to say like uh, level six, it'll take two hours from the time that you have that your lights come on to fully maximize to to basically simulate a sunrise. So they'll start at level one. And then after a certain amount of time, I'm going to go to level two, and so on and so on, until it gets all the way up to level six. It, same goes for the sunset. So two hours before your, your light is scheduled to go off, it'll start simulating sunset. So the lights will get down to a five, and then a four, and then a three, you know, and so on, until they get to, to zero. So it's, it's kind of the most useful thing to, if you're if you're trying to mimic you know an actual sunrise sunset table um, i've played around with this with one of my grills and you know it's kind of interesting how it works so I, I haven't you know done it enough to say like you should do it but it's something interesting that i, f I thought was kind of cool so uh i can't think of anything else at this time that i really want to go over um there are these transition things you know the transition temperature um, buffers that you might want to play around with um, you know if you set it one degree these are kind of so your 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 devices don't kick on exactly you know at your your trigger temperature or your trigger humidity they kind of give a little buffer area so you have a little bit of wiggle room so they're not going off at the right time if your device is kind of hovering around that one level a lot it'll just give you some room to play with and you know you can set those by one or two degrees on any one of your devices, you know, and it'll just save your device from just continually triggering if it's at that level. So I guess that wraps it up. I hope uh, I just did okay with this video for you guys. Uh, you know, these are kind of just basic settings. I know, I know there's a lot of uh, advanced configurations, but, uh, uh, that's, that's about it for now. I'm going to wrap it up with that. So, uh, thanks for watching.